Gary, I'm curious why you turned to Kickstarter to self-publish your book. Why not go a more traditional route? It was a process, actually. It was, it, was, it was an educational learning curve for me. It took me a while to figure out that I didn't want a publisher, that I did want to self-publish. And the relevant reason primarily is I really wanted Manifest Destiny. I wanted to own my own intellectual property and not give it up and not be on a royalty basis with a publisher who wasn't going to market it anyway. I thought, you know what, I really want because I care deeply about what's in the book. It represents 25 years of my life. And I've always been in love with the storytellers, with the creatives, and I want to get this information out. So I thought if I own it, I'm more free to do that in more innovative ways. So number one, I thought I'm going to self-publish. The second step was then how do you self-publish? It's a very fast shifting landscape, this world of publishing. And it's, it's every day, it's, it's changing by the hour. And I, I thought about it, and I thought, okay, I, I've decided some things that are good for me. And there's a lot of moving parts, so I thought, okay, I'm going to hire layout designers and people to e-format it and book cover design it, and I'm going to hire a printer and order a certain book run, and on and on. And there's a long laundry list, right? I thought, you know what? If I do all that, that's great. I'll have a beautiful book and no audience, and I have to start from zero. Then I just then I thought I started these conversations, asking people about it crowdsourcing, crowdfunding in particular, about Indiegogo, about Kickstarter, and I realized Kickstarter really was a phenomenal opportunity. Not just because, and, 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 and the least of it was the fundraising. Uh, what was most interesting to me was I get this period of time over which to build a community. I get to find my brand evangelist. I get to um, really put my message out, almost serialize it, right, over time, and drive traffic from all quarters, from traditional media and my database and other people to this place called Kickstarter. And it's very dynamic. So this to me was the perfect community building opportunity, pre-seed, pre, you know, just till the soil. Right. How much pre-planning did you do before you launched the campaign and what sources did you go to to gather information on crowdfunding? Um, well, I have a, uh, my, my partner, Morgan, is very astute about social strategy, so she knew a fair amount about it to begin with. Um, I did not. I had to sort of study from the beginning. And, but she brought me up to speed fairly quickly, and then we just asked a lot of people who we'd seen doing it that we, we had contacts to. Um, and you just Google, and you, you know, today, how do you learn? You Google, and you ask people, and you get on social media, and you ask people. Um, but it became very clear that Kickstarter was the platform that was the best fit for us. And, uh, and I'll be honest with you, you, you know, it's, it's not quite as neat and clean as you would hope. You use your best judgment, you go with your gut, because I think your gut is your best guide for this kind of a social experience. Um, it's not a sales job. You can't, you just, it's got to be about something bigger than that. So it felt like if we just stay, if we're really vulnerable and honest and candid and, and committed to what we're doing and put that message out, whether it's the video or the copy or however we present, our choice of our ways of saying thank you, the perks that we put together, the people that we enrolled from my film industry community to be a part of that, if we created that as the ethos, the fabric of who we are and what we're doing and we stayed true to that, how bad could we fail? So that's how we began, was just sort of seated the pants. And we've learned so much every week, and it's only been two weeks into the campaign, we've learned so much. Well, it looks like what, you're almost 80% funded or something? Or you're very we're, we, we're, we're just 90% funded, okay. and we're about halfway through. Uh, and now we just did a Twitter tweet-a-thon today, and we're getting some traditional media to drive traffic to it over the coming 10 days or week. Um, and I, I think we're learning how to um, uh, not sustain energy, but actually build it and create a bigger conversation and bring more, invite more people in. And what's interesting is how much people are ready to say yes. People really like to be part of this kind of open conversation about something they deeply care about. And not, they don't deeply care about it because it's necessarily screenwriting and they're not a screenwriter. It's about creativity. It's about seeing people realize, in this case, maybe it's even seeing me realize a dream of mine. There's something that really tugs at people about that. 
and it's cool.